Lee Kuan Yew, who is now thankfully walking the final steps of his existence, once told Charlie Rose, the, the American interviewer, that his was not a police state, that he was not a policeman. All he needed, he said, was the administration of the law. Let me say to him, in your name, in the name of the 22 who were detained and tortured and all those detained under the Internal Security Act, and even in the name of the officers that he got to do his grubby work for him, that was not all you needed. What you needed, and you worked so hard to achieve it, and you did, was to degrade the humanity of your people. You hobbled the trade unions. You threw the politicians into jail. You silenced the newspapers. You co-opted the professional bodies. And you impoverished the universities. And you bankrupted and exiled so many of our honest, decent fellow Singaporeans, some of the best people in our community. In a sense, you exiled and bankrupted us all. My friends, to breathe the air of freedom, to know that I am able to share my thoughts, to join with other people, to recognize distress and go out and do something about it, should be the first of our rights. And what is most offensive, what is most objectionable, what was the greatest crime of Operation Spectrum was this. That 22 young people, idealistic people, filled with justice and compassion, were thrown in jail and were tortured because they looked around them, they saw that poverty was increasing, that people were being bullied by their employers, losing their jobs, and they decided to do something about it. By doing research, by setting up shelters for battered women and training centers for foreign maids, by helping Mr. Jayaratnam, by staffing help desks and welfare programs, by providing warmth and shelter and hope for our most disadvantaged brothers and sisters, gently and with determination and with courage. They put a question mark on the assumptions upon which the PAP had presumed to recreate our country, where wealth and status became preferred to kindness and community. And so, allow me to repeat it because it bears repeating. They were imprisoned and they were tortured. Think about that for a moment in the silence of your own hearts, for helping their fellow men the poor and the disadvantaged. They were imprisoned and they were tortured. My friends, who will still say that they even begin to understand the violence that was done to us that day? And who will say that it was justified? I hope you will read what has been written in the three books that are launched today because they represent the only truth of Operation Spectrum. And when you are finished, you will no doubt ask that pressing question, why did our government do it? Now, in a nutshell, the middle 1980s, Singapore faced a very severe recession because of economic policy at the time. Wages went down, factories began to work 24-hour shifts. Shifts were increased from 8 to 12 hours. Putting those 22 into jail was their way to silence them, their way to try and remove the knowledge of the suffering that was happening. But if you think that the repression of the, those years has disappeared with the march of time, then you are wrong. Uh, it has only replaced the mask that it wears. This morning, uh, we read in Facebook, Mr. Jolivan Wem, um, one of our most respected civil society activists, twice awarded for his work, also a social worker, was told by a large multinational on Thursday that 
he must not speak at these proceedings, that to do so would jeopardize his standing with the donor community. Now, some of you may remember in 1995, Ken Saro Wewa, uh, distinguished, some say the best Nigerian writer, was hanged on trumped up charges because he opposed the degradation of the Ogoni Delta in Nigeria by the Shell Corporation. In Singapore, almost 20 years later, a multinational corporation presumes to tell a Singapore citizen what he may or may not say, and when, and how. Mr. Wang, I imagine, will not be hanged. But silence is still silence, whether it is achieved by threats and bullying, or whether it is achieved at the end of a rope. And when you become silent about injustice, you start to die inside. To his credit, Mr. Wham has not become silent. The silence achieved through a complicit media was all that allowed our government to achieve Operation Spectrum. Only silence. Today, if you keep the silence, if you pretend that all women do not have to work into their 80s as cleaners, that all men do not collect tin cans to exist, that jobs are not being lost to those who are prepared to accept starvation wages, and that workers are still deprived of so many of their rights, that people don't commit suicide in order to avoid hospital costs, and that one in ten of our, children, of our people has a mental illness. And if you console yourself that all you need is a high GDP, rising house prices, bars and nightclubs and fast cars, walkways that are covered and HDB upgrading schemes. If you think that our rights are a price worth paying, then you have begun to die inside. Thank you very much.